All right, guys, we're moving on to page 39, and we are at the summer of 1787. Uh, where are we? Yes, we're at the Constitutional Convention. What are we doing here? We are trying to revise the Articles of Confederation. What do we know about the Articles of Confederation? That they weren't working out. Why are they not working out? Because it created a weak national government and a strong state government. And remember, Shays' Rebellion really proved that the Articles of Confederation wasn't working out. So what do we end up doing? We end up calling a meeting, and that meeting is going to be called the Constitutional Convention. Where did it take place? Here in Independence Hall in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And what was the main reason or the main purpose that we were coming to the Constitutional Convention? It was to try to change the Articles of Confederation, try to fix them to make it better. However, is that going to be possible? No, why not? Because in order to make a change to the Articles of Confederation, you needed the approval, the unanimous approval of all 13 states. And do all 13 states show up to the Constitutional Convention? No, somebody's absent. Who's absent? Rhode Island is absent. So because Rhode Island is absent, there's only 12 that show up. What does this say? That we don't have all 13 to make a change. So what is the effect? We're going to have to end up writing a new constitution. Who is present at the Constitutional Convention? We know that George Washington is there. He's going to be selected as a leader of the Constitutional Convention. We know that Benjamin Franklin is going to be there, and he's going to be the oldest one. He's 81 at the time at the Constitutional Convention. And then, of course, James Madison is very important because he's going to be the author of the new declaration. I'm sorry, the new Constitution. Um, when we're at the Constitutional Convention, though, there's going to be some major issues. Those major issues are going to be representation in Congress and slavery. So as far as representation in Congress, let's go ahead and go to page 40. The big states and the little states are going to be arguing. They're both going to have their own plan as far as representation. Now, what is the issue with representation? We've discussed this before. Representation is basically how many representatives get to go to Congress. Remember, Congress is where they make the laws. But do we all get to go make laws in Congress? No. We have to select representatives to speak on our behalf and to be able to have votes and influence in Congress to get some laws either passed or some laws changed. So the large states are going to say, oh, because we have more people, we should have more representatives in Congress because we have a lot more people. The small states are going to say, well, that's not fair because we're small. We're never going to be able to outvote you because we're not going to ever have enough people within our state. So when we're at the Constitutional Convention, there's going to be two plans. And these are the two plans. We're going to have the Virginia plan and the New Jersey plan. Virginia plan, they favored the large states. Edmund Randolph and James Madison come up with this plan. What do they say? That we should divide Congress into two houses. One of the houses should be the House of Representatives, and the other one should be the Senate. That means bicameral. We're dividing the House Congress into two houses. That means bicameral. What do they also say? that representation should be proportional to a state's population, meaning the more people you have, the more representatives should represent you in Congress. They also believe that we should have three branches of government. On the other side, the New Jersey plan, they're going to favor the smaller states. They're going to want a unicameral Congress. What does that mean? That Congress should just be one house and we should not divide it. And they're also going to believe in those three branches of government. Overall, that's going to get in. But they say, in order to make it fair, we should have equal representation. That means that every state should have the same amount of representatives in Congress. Now, the convention is all about agreements and compromise. Remember, not everyone is going to get what they want at the end. We have to come to some sort of middle point. So what is the compromise with these two plans? That's going to be what Roger Sherman brings out, known as the Great Compromise. Hi, Corey. Pull it off here. Here we go. The Great Compromise. What does the Great Compromise presented by Roger Sherman say? He said that we should definitely divide Congress into do. We should make it bicameral over here, bicameral, two houses. So we're going to divide Congress into two sections. One of them will give to Virginia the way they want it. They, the Virginia plan will be the House of Representatives, and they will have proportional representation, meaning the more people you have in your state, the more representatives you get to uh, have in Congress. 
Now, the New Jersey plan is going to be given to the Senate, meaning that every state will send two senators to Congress uh, in order to represent them. And in order to get a law passed, guys, we talked about this in class, a law first has to go to the House of Representatives. They have to approve it. And then it goes over to the Senate. They also have to approve it. And then it can go, go ahead and go over to the executive branch, which is the president. He will go ahead and um, either agree or not agree. And if he doesn't agree, he's going to go ahead and veto the law. So that is the great compromise presented by Roger Sherman. Now, another issue at the Constitutional Convention, of course, is going to be slavery. As far as slavery, remember the South, they're adamant on slavery. Why? Because that's how they make their money. That's how their economy has worked out. They work off of that free labor. They need the free labor. So what are they going to say? Since we, in the House of Representatives, it's proportional representation. The more people you have, the more representatives you have. They're going to say, we should counter slaves towards our population. The North is going to say, or anti-slavery is going to say, that's not fair because you don't even count or you don't even see your slaves as equal people. They're considered property. So why should you be able to count them as uh, part of your population? But again, we're at the Constitutional Convention. We definitely want everyone to be in agreement and we need to compromise. So what ends up happening? They end up agreeing that out of every five slaves, they're going to be able to count three of them towards representation in Congress and towards taxation. So that is known as the three-fifths compromise. I hope this video helped you out, guys.